My name is Glenis Shatner. I'm the CEO of Regional Development Australia, Chancellor of North West Queensland, or ADIA for short. We're funded by the Australian Government to work on economic development and facilitation of advoc and advocacy uh, right across our great region. Our main job is creating jobs. Uh, today we're delighted to be bringing you a webinar and discussion uh, around our project called Building Jobs in Northern Queensland. This project has been auspiced by the Department of Education, Skills and Employment in Canberra, and we're delighted to be one of 10 regions around Australia uh, running these types of projects. Today we uh, will be sharing a, a range of information with you that we hope will be helpful for your businesses, such as uh, getting yourself ready for the pipeline of projects and information about what is coming up in the Northern Queensland region. Secondly, they will also be able to help you with some advice about workforce planning and tapping into all the networks that can help you with planning your workforce and employment needs. I'd like to now introduce our panel today, and uh, they are uh, Damien Long, who is also online today. Uh, he's the Chief Executive Officer of Civil Contractors Federation Queensland. Welcome, Damien. Uh, Damien is also a past president, vice president, honorary treasurer of CCF, and he has had over 28 years of construction sector experience. Damien's career has spanned across a diverse range of industries within Australia, from oil, commercial building, infrastructure, commercial civil works, residential and also industrial civil works. That's great to have you on board today, Damien, and thank you for your support with this project too. I'd also now like to welcome and introduce Clinton Huff, the Operations Manager of Shamrock Civil. Clinton has a breadth of leadership and senior management experience in the civil construction industry, having worked both in the public and private sectors over about 40 years. His diversity of experiences and the networks that he has provided him with a sound knowledge of the Townsville region and the opportunity opportunities it offers. Clinton is also on the board of the Townsville Chamber of Commerce, so welcome Clinton. Lolita, I would like to introduce right over right behind me, and uh, we will, I will move out of your way shortly. Uh, Lolita is the engagement manager for Construction Skills Queensland and services the North and Northwest Queensland region. Lolita has over 20 years of experience across the vocational education and training industry with a primary focus on supporting both individuals and businesses to source the best training solutions to meet their needs. So Lilita, thank you for joining us today. We know your region covers our region of towns and northwest Queens and even larger, so thank you. And uh, certainly last but not least is Jeanette Warrington, the Acting Procurement Manager with QBIL. Welcome, Lily. Thank you. Welcome, Jeanette. <laughs> um, Jeanette has a wide uh, range of experience and uh, is with the Department of Public Works. Jeanette has over um, uh, many years of experience in procuring goods and service from the building services category market, which contributes to economic development and opportunity for the building industry locally and across the North Queensland region. So welcome, Jeanette. Thank Great you. to have you on board. And I'd now like to hand over to Janie, our project manager on this uh, project, to be able to facilitate the conversation going forward. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm just going to share my screen now. We're going to go straight into um, our project priorities and um, as Glenys has um, introduced, um, we the, the project intentions are really to increase knowledge um, within the civil and commercial construction sector or the pipeline of works and in the in the with the intention that we can create stronger connections between regional stakeholders and uh, employment and training service providers. Um, with this, we have created uh, a schedule of projects uh, in the five local government areas for Townsville, Charters, Towers, Burdekin, Henshinbrook, uh, Mount Isa, and Mount Isa local government areas. Um, this uh, um, database is uh, has been created with the assistance of gathering information uh, of publicly available material um, with the support of CSQ and um, information from the Townsville Enterprise, um, you know, uh, newspapers and published articles, as well as the Queensland major projects and pipeline. I'm going to try and show you an example of what this PowerPoint, what this um, database looks like. 
here. Hmm, it's not changing. Okay, the link is available uh, on this PowerPoint and you will be able to have access to it. Can you hear me? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so if you go into our RDA website, uh, there is a uh, direct link to the, to the database and it literally has about 150 line items of projects in the five local government areas. Um, and um, the, with, with information around where these projects are, uh, are and um, the value of the projects, um, you know, the timelines of when they are likely to commence uh, and, and complete. Um, as well as uh, where possible the number of jobs um, that will be required for these projects. Um, what we have been able to gather from our research are that there are some major tenders uh, coming up that are still open um, uh, before the end of financial year, knowing that in the commencement of the next financial year, there will be plenty more um, available, as you will see in the next few slides. So uh, these three large um, organisations with projects that are coming up have, um, um, as you, you may be um, aware, um, the, with the current news um, available for Harvey Range to, uh, Development Road, um, that was just, that, that funding was just released recently. And then there are a multiple um, James Cook University projects with tenders that are um, open currently and that will be closing in the next couple of months. Um, the Proserpine Entertainment Centre, although that doesn't really sit in the Townsville region, um, would provide opportunities for some local um, businesses, local contractors um, to bid. This is in the Sundays region. Um, so in the next slide we have uh, some major, major projects coming up um, in the next few years. Um, Clinton and Damien will be um, able to discuss this in, uh, with great detail um, based on their knowledge of the sector. And also to look out for in the future it, uh, um, projects that are direct um, result of the stimulus packages that have just been recently released. Um, so local government projects, there, there would be improvement um, projects and, and works projects, as well as water defence. And what are these funding that has been released? So recently there was an announcement um, for the BBRF round four. Uh, there was um, Unimount ISO and, and um, Charters Towers have been successful in, um, in gaining funding in this round. And um, the recent announcements um, with federal and Queensland government uh, for the $185 million worth of roadworks um, um, that will be available in the region. Um, as well as the 400 million road stimulus package announced by Queensland government recently and the 500 million local roads and community infrastructure program. I also like to highlight that the in the uh, Works for Queensland 2019-2021 Council um, budget rounds, um, these are the allocations for works coming up. So there are there is funding available for for works um, in the next eighteen to twenty four months. Just be on the lookout for um, news uh, release of uh, information and tenders that will be called through the council websites. 
With this, I would like to um, talk about um, information sources. So where, where have I gone to find this information about, you know, um, major projects and, and tenders and, and um, information as such? Um, and with great help, um, Lolita from uh, Construction Skills Queensland has been um, uh, a valuable source uh, of information with a connection in the sector, as well as um, information that is available through the Knowledge Centre. Um, and Lolita will talk about um, a little bit about what uh, Construction Skills Queensland does and, and how they um, help and support the sector. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Um, so, yeah, our role really is to work very closely with industry, um, making sure they have the most current and up-to-date information. Uh, we're an industry training fund and we subsidise uh, training for the building and construction industry and make sure we can help them and navigate through a number of different programs from short courses through to advanced diploma programs. So we're really there for industry to... To, to you know, make sure we support and look after them. Uh, we receive our funding through a small levy, so every construction site over a particular value, about 150,000. Um, that's how we receive our, our, our funding. And as I mentioned, that gets channeled through to a number of programs. And we select those programs based on our consultation with industry both on a local level and a state level. So it's making sure that we're really hitting the mark and um, we're seeing what the demands are for our industry. Uh, we don't do this alone we, we, and we don't deliver the training ourselves. We connect and we partner with a number of regional uh, or registered training organisations, uh, both locally and across the state as well. Um, so, yeah, again, happy to support businesses and industry to making those connections um, to finding the right training solution for them. Uh, and we also provide a number of industry reports which you can find on our website through our Knowledge Centre as well. So that's all our projections and forecasts and that for the region. However, please keep in mind that it was pre-COVID-19, so it's constantly evolving. So um, sometimes a little bit hard to predict at the moment, but yeah, certainly reach out to us and we will provide you with the information you need to help your business. So there are three main priority areas for us. So we have the attract areas so making sure we attract the right talent, the right people for the construction industry. And we do that through a number of pre-employment programs and also working closely with the schools in our region. We have our develop areas, so that's your existing workforce. So um, again, making sure that they have the skills and training that they need um, to carry out their work uh, and assist with workforce planning as well, um, providing them with the necessary tools for businesses. And we have our retain area, so making sure we hold on to that talent um, in the industry and we have a, a number of different initiatives there, particularly um, one of our newest programs is our Apprentice Advanced Plus program. So making sure, yeah, the apprentices continue to, to upskill and train. Yeah. And yeah, so as Janie mentioned, our Knowledge Centre. So this is a fantastic portal uh, where you can find some really valuable information you can explore by region. Um, so yeah, you just filter onto the Northern region to find out all the up and coming projects. Um, as well as you can explore by projects. So really drilling down on a particular project to find out um, some information on the value of the project, the timelines. Uh, it also gives you the labour workforce requirements, um, whether that's in the plan phase, um, committed or underway. And again, yeah, if you need any further information, certainly reach out to me and I can provide you with um, information on principal contractors and, and who's been awarded various con contracts across the region. Oh, I can't see the slides. All right, um, what I can do is um, we will be posting this um, entire webinar <clears throat> and the recordings and they will be available through our website 
Um, and we will definitely be able to send you the slides um, directly. So uh, apologies for that. Let me just um, try something else. It's saying it's sharing. Oh, okay. I can see it. Oh, it's saying it's sharing, like it's, you know. So let me. Uh, All right. Can you can you see this slide now? Ah, oh, great. Okay. Okay. Um, next, we're going to um, introduce um, Damien to talk about. Um, Damien to talk about uh, the role of CCF as an information source um, and, um, and their support for um, the contractors um, uh, and, and the construction sector. Damien. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, well, CCF is an industry association, so we are a body uh, whose members are made up by corporations. So um, we don't have individual membership, it's all corporation, corporate membership. So our um, goal, uh, we're a national body, so we have uh, branches in each state and territory. Uh, we have a head office in Canberra, um, but each state um, are their own entity uh, responsible for the industry uh, in, within each state. Our primary objective is to make business conditions uh, better uh, for the construction industry and particularly the employers in the construction industry. So what does that mean? That means um, it's the whole, the whole pipeline of, of the business from uh, where do you get the work from, what does the work look like, who's providing the work, um, how, does, how does your business bid for this work, um, how is your business structured, the support you need around um, your business, um, advice around uh, workplace health and safety, environmental management, uh, legal issues. Uh, we, we provide an enormous amount of information around legislative changes. Um, anything that basically affects uh, your business, uh, we provide that support around there. Um, we do an enormous amount of advocacy, so different different members get different things out of what we do. Um, and uh, so, for some people, the advocacy is not that important. Uh, it's more about business support. Others, advocacy is, is the major player. So, we are at, at continually talking to uh, all levels of government, local government, uh, state government, and uh, federal government. Um, we've been particularly through COVID. We've been extremely active in this space. Um, and number one, make sure the industry kept working. That was our biggest fear that they shut down this industry. So we worked very hard behind the scenes getting insurances that it didn't get shut down. Um, from that point on is then is actually working out what we can do, not only for the economy, but what we can do for our industry and actually the survival of, of the businesses. So we're working very hard now, maintaining, make sure that the money flows, um, that there's no erosion of that money and we're looking to build on it. Uh, we're also working very hard to make sure that there is no uh, hole in the economy further down the track. So even though there may be some sugar hits now, we don't want to make sure that we want to make sure that um, down the track in a couple of years' time, when the money runs out, that our industry uh, tanks. So we've got to be very, very careful of that. Um, we work regionally, so uh, we're not focused in southeast Queensland. We're, us as CCF, we have an office in Cairns. We're heavily based in Townsville. We also have a presence in um, southeast Queensland. Um, and then for the employees, I should, should say, is the even though employees aren't members, uh, we do support those for a range of initiatives. Uh, skilling is one of those initiatives. So we um, have a, uh, a, a training arm, an RTO, called Civil Train. 
and uh, we provide um, a range of courses um, and partner with uh, uh, industry, so, uh, well, industry uh, through CSQ. Um, and I must declare an interest, I'm also on the board of CSQ, so um, I can um, talk pretty uh, with some authority around what, what that looks like. Um, the other things we provide is um, for larger companies, it's probably not such a big deal, but for smaller ones, we use our, our buying power to provide a range of um, um, discounts for our members and right through from you know buying vehicles through to um, insurance products, that type of thing. Um, and they change relatively um, regularly, I would say, but the major ones at the moment, you know, legal advice, um, uh, HRIR advice, insurance, and our vehicle purchases, that's been a pretty long stay for us for quite some time. And the other thing we do too is we run a number of events, so industry nights, it's all about industry sharing of information. Uh, it's also about networking, so connecting uh, people with their clients, uh, and that's where the subcontractors are, collect, are connecting with head contractors, or head contractors are connecting with um, the clients, uh, whether they're government or private, uh, and try and keep up to date with uh, industry intel. So we do partner with a lot of people, like RDA specifically, um, uh, and, and anyone else who can add value or provide information through the, into the industry. So um, that's uh, effectively the, 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 the quick 10 minute snapshot of what we do. Thanks, Damien. Um, now we'd like to share uh, information, valuable information that um, Jeanette <laughs> will bring <laughs> to this. <laughs> um, we hope to draw out the process of tendering um, and Let me just the process of tendering um, and demystify the whole um, navigating Q build and Q tenders. <laughs> Let me just uh, bring that back. I need to fix a. This is just a little bit. Clunky share. There we go. Okay, I'm hope I'm hoping this works. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Yes. Everyone seeing the slides? All right. All right. Okay then. Um, my name's Jeanette, I'm the Acting Procurement Manager for um, QBuild North Queensland region. So just a little bit about who QBuild is. So we're a commercial business unit uh, within the Department of Housing and Public Works. We were formerly known as Building and Asset Services. So what we do is we procure um, the delivery of building construction service maintenance um, for government departments across Queensland. So we operate across six regional areas throughout Queensland. So that's like Southeast Queensland, uh, Southwest Queensland, Wide Bay area, Central Queensland, North Queensland and Far North Queensland. Um, we, uh, we deliver I forgot to mention, we deliver over 90% um, via industry through a variety of sourcing solutions. So we, um, we have field staff now, but 5% of that normally is just for our field staff and apprentices that we now have on board as um, the government is moving back into um, training our young. Oh, sorry, if you can go back. I, I just missed a little bit that, um, yeah, because a lot of people think that we don't um, go out to industry as much as what we used to with uh, our apprentices and that coming on board. So what Queen's uh, QBuild facilitates the following um, works for um, industry and local suppliers. So we do a, a main majority of construction activities. Uh, most maintenance and repair services, um, we do building operations, so security, pest control, trade works. Uh, we engage with electrical, plumbing, 
painting, flooring, fencing, landscaping, glazing, and specialist ser uh, services, your consultants. So it's um, a great opportunity uh, for local businesses to supply to these services to our government. Next. Yeah, sorry. These are just our um, Queensland, our Kubil Regional Offices. So they're our email addresses. If you are, are interested in working in any of these regions, uh, just email that address. It goes to a just a normal procurement mailbox and the procurement people will pick it up and get in contact with you. And as you can see on the map on the side, there's the areas that each region covers. So. Uh, say North Queensland, we cover Townsville and we go, our, our district officer is Mount Isa. So um, we go all the way to uh, Ingham, all the way out to Mount Isa, up to Birdsville, um, Karumba, Mornington Island in your remote areas. Next, sorry. <laughs> so uh, that's our North Regional um, Office contact. Our regional director at the moment is currently Wayne Green. Uh, he's on to comment uh, here uh, till July. And um, I'm thinking Don Matthews may be back in the future. Uh, and we've also got a Mount Isa district office, uh, which is uh, Chris Limpers. If you're interested in working out in the Mount Isa area, there is a procurement area out there um, that you can contact uh, them and then they'll be able to help you uh, through the process of any tenders that are coming up in Mount Isa. So getting started, so to actually uh, do work for QBuild, you actually have to go through a registration um, and it's all online, quite easy. Um, you just log on and you provide your ACN, your ABN, your certificates of currency, work cover, uh, your public liability needs to be 20 million and you've also got to have your work cover or self um, insurance for that. Um, and you have to keep your registration up to date. Um, every two years, you may, I think you get a reminder to re-register or to update your details. So uh, for registration compliance, you do actually have to agree with the conditions of working with uh, QBuild. Uh, for contractors, there's also one for consultants and one for suppliers. They can all be found on the uh, registration website when you go to register. Ensure that you read these conditions before registering because that's what you're going to abide by when working with QBuild. Uh, for government um, building projects, there's a requirement to be pre-qualified through the pre-qualification uh, system. That's anything that's over a million dollars. So you go through a separate thing through um, the PQC registration. Uh, it's a little bit different to our QBIL one. Our QBIL one is quite simple. The PQC, they go through like uh, what your capability, capacity is, uh, financials and so forth. And the same with the building consultant, anything over 60,000 you need to be pre-qualified. And the website on my information down further, there's links where you can go read about it and you can actually email or contact the PQC registrar for additional information. So I've already gone through the whole I jumped, sorry. That's all right. So our tender of um, options, so we have a iris tenders, they're um, our small tenders up to 250. They go through a select process and they're all um, contractors, suppliers, consultants that are registered with QBuild on our database. So we will just go anything for 250, we can go out to three up to 10 uh, contractors, inviting them to submit an offer for any sort of maintenance works that's going on. QBuild e-tender, therefore construction works over 250. Um, it could be demolition, fit out, maintenance, uh, and education staff, uh, sports facilities areas. And it can either be select or open, open uh, tender process. We also use uh, QTenders, it's uh, public tenders, uh, all advertised by this system with information about the location of the tender documents and tender close location. We use QTenders, we will direct you to go, uh, it will direct you to use our eTender, simple process to register, you'll get a username and you'll get a password and then you'll be registered in that and you should be able to look 
uh, on there for any up and coming tenders uh, through QBuild or HPW. So we also um, utilise standing offer arrangements. We've got one that is kind of like on hold at the moment um, and it's our trade contractors one. So that'll be our five trades. Uh, it'll be air conditioning, plumbing, carpentry, um, electrical. Uh, it will be called via um, e-tender as well and q-tender. So uh, that's on hold at the moment, but we're hoping in the new financial year it will be uh, back on the back on the cards again, um, and hopefully we will be going out. At the moment, we're just using our trades SOA, which um, is very similar. So just the potential industry opportunities that we have coming up in the Townsville and Mount Isa regions. So we've got the, um, the office fit out for HSC, so that's our housing um, fit out, and that's in Sturt Street. That should be coming out hopefully June, July. Um, we've also got the Magnetic Island Apex Active Recreation Camp. The documents should be available shortly. The Townsville Sports Reserve Active Precinct. So we're hoping late um, July for tenders to be coming out for that. We've also got the Magnetic Island Fort Junction Hub late June we're looking at. And the Charters Towers Fire Station new construction tender. Um, it was supposed to be late May. Well, we've passed May now. So we're looking at um, June, July. And then there's also the trade contract standing offer arrangement for our planned and responsive maintenance. That'll be in um, most probably now 2021. And in Mount Isa, we've just got um, the government employee housing projects for remote areas um, in Normanton, so at the moment. So we're all about uh, zero harm, so uh, we uh, take workplace health and safety seriously, and that's just some information on there. It is available on our, on our uh, website with our uh, safe work method statements and work area access permits to some of our government sites like education, correctional centres, TAFEs. Um, and uh, I think if you have any issues with your safe work method statement, you can actually contact our safety um, representative at QBuild in NQ and they are able to assist in hoping, um, helping you get your uh, work method statements correct. So this is just some in additional information. So uh, the QBIL registration site, that's the email address and also the link. If you click on to that, if the slides are made available, it'll take you straight there. It's also got our QTender uh, website and there's also the QTender website, Future Procurement Opportunities for Suppliers. That's the um, pipeline of works and it's for all of Queensland. Um, for any sort of upcoming potential work uh, in each region. Uh, so we've also got our QTender, our QBuild eTender website, got so many websites. <laughs> um, that's where we do a lot of our uh, tendering for anything that's over 250,000. It can either be open or select. And there's also our ethical supply mandate. Um, there's a link there for what your requirements are for Queensland government when tendering um, with the ethical. Uh, that's uh, our email address there. If you've got any questions or you want to register or you need any help, just uh, use that email address. And uh, my contact details are on the front of the slide. You can just give me a call, not a problem. And that's just our website. All right, we might take questions later. Um, stop sharing. So next we will uh, move on to the next part of our uh, webinar and um, Damien and uh, Clinton will discuss uh, and uh, about the major projects that we had highlighted earlier um, and we'd like to, you know, with the discussions around the contracts that, that would be coming up as part of the, delivering these major projects, um, the types of roles that uh, we would be looking at and what potential skill sets are we, uh, will we be requiring um, to prepare for workplace, workforce planning discussions. Um, so let me just...
get that up. And there would be these projects. Clinton. Very good, thanks, Jenny. The first one there, the Australian Singapore Military Training Initiative, the $2.3 billion is uh, total project value, which is realistically split across two areas. It's split across the uh, Shoalwater Bay training area down in central Queensland, just north of Rockhampton, and across the new area to be built at Greenvale, west of Townsville. Um, that 2.3 billion is inclusive of the uh, money used to purchase land to actually build these facilities. So it comes down to about $800 million for the Greenvale and $800 million for the Shoalwater Bay, the actual construction components. Um, the Shoalwater Bay area has already kicked off with Lango Rock, were announced as the major uh, contractor down there and they've started calling the tenders for the works down there at the moment. Uh, the project will run over a couple of years, so it's still not too late to be involved with that one down there. Uh, the, if you want to get involved, you certainly need to contact Lang O'Raw. They do have an office based in Rockhampton and register with them and through an expression of interest that you're interested in the types of works down there. And the, the works are predominantly um, civil construction works with roads to be upgraded um, to carry the new vehicles that the Department of Defence have. It's enhancing all of the uh, drainage and creek crossings that are through the through the site down there. There's over 400 of those. Um, it's about enhancing the airport down there and it's about building some new concrete uh, links lab buildings to uh, provide areas for the defence and their training. So the, the types of skill sets that are going to be required down there are your traditional horizontal um, works. Um, oh yeah, there's some, some of the works around the airport stuff will require the specialist asphalt in skills, etc., um, aligned with the traditional asphalt uh, providers, the specialist providers there. And then you'll have the building works, which is standing up the precast slab walls and tying the buildings together. So the works down there will be very similar to what's going to happen at Greenvale, with the difference being that Greenvale is a, it's a new site, so it does have to have fencing all around, it will have to have all the roads that they will need built through there for their access, for their spine roads, and then coming off there to the different areas that they have, for any ranges for their airstrips which need to be built. So it is a greenfield site. So again, it'll be traditionally the horizontal type works, but there will also be necessity for all of the communications work up there. So there'll be a lot of work associated with um, the defence forces requirements in communications across the base and between bases because going forward they are looking at how they link their bases together and have training initiatives which are linked virtually across sites so there will be necessity for a lot more electrical and communication networks to be set up across that site. In the beginning the early works for the um, Greenvale site are forecast to start later this year um, ACOM, no, sorry, not ACOM, Oricon, I should say, uh, are in charge of that, and they will be releasing tenders that, as they have the packages pulled together. They have released one package already for some fencing and sign work. There will be more of those to come um, in the early works packages. There will be some minor road works and potentially a, an access point um, within the early works areas. Uh, so the types of skills up there, be looking for your roadworks people, be looking for people with fencing skills, um, be looking for some concrete works, 
um, in the early parts. Going past there, there will be communication skills at a high level to meet defence requirements. There will be electrical skills, there will be building skills, there will be people with um, experience in uh, air, airport or airstrip structures. Um, so the other ones that will go in there will be with their targetry systems and with their targetry systems it's a specialist area as well so there will be requirements for high level uh, electronics involved in that so there's potentially some really good opportunities coming up in there and that program of works will run over a couple of years. The tender process for the Greenvale sector has gone through the first phase, it's been through the expression of interest. They've shortlisted to three organisations to um, pull together their tenders and the three organisations are Lend Lease, Lang O'Rourke and CPB. So if people want to get into the early stages, the ideal thing would be make sure you make contact with those three organisations, put yourself in front of them, get on their radar, provide your capability statement, make sure they're aware of what you can do, align to that project to be able to help them out. A large part of the projects is about um, local capability providing a workforce. So surely get yourself in front of them. As I say, put your best foot forward and explain what you can do, how you're based here and how you would be able to provide works at that site. And, and we are um, co-delivering a webinar in this space uh, scheduled for the 18th if you haven't already registered. Yes. So by all means, go to the webinar. You'll hear it direct from defence uh, personnel at that stage. They'll give you an update that um, that's where things are sitting at the moment. So as I said, the tenders have been shortlisted to those three that I mentioned and that will progress over the next few months with somebody being identified as who will be the major contractor for that before the end of the year. They'll probably take around 12 months to then go into the um, final design and construct phase of that, and which will mean that actual construction on the major component, not the early works component, on the major component probably kick off in about 2022. Damien, do you have any comments on that? Uh, not really. Actually, Clinton's covered it quite well, but... Um, yep. I was just saying that probably the you know the, the the philosophy probably from both governments is to um, support uh, regional Queensland and particularly northern Australia. So um, support a lot of these projects um, are privately funded. Um, some are federally government funded with um, probably some bit of overseas money, and and others are um, are state funded projects. So we're, we're lucky that we've both, doesn't matter what colour of um, politics you are, but both sides of government are very supportive of um, regional development and particularly Northern Australian development, which is good to see. Um, the major projects provide, uh, you know, depending on where you are in the contracting chain can provide a lot of different things. I think the, the most important thing is they, they provide confidence to an area. Um, they also provide support for the supply chains. Um, so whether it's um, aggregate supply, concrete, cement, um, pipe supply, that type of thing. So it keeps those businesses ticking over, which is quite good. If you're a principal contractor in your own right, uh, some of these projects probably aren't as um, um, uh, attractive to you. Uh, if you're a subcontractor, they certainly are. Um, one of the things we're pushing very hard at the moment now is to make sure that the that there is a lot of projects being pushed into the areas, um, particularly uh, Townsville and, and regional areas that are smaller in nature, um, that give the contractors who are principal contractors in their own right an opportunity to to bid and win those projects. Um, it's incredibly important to those businesses not only just to survive, but uh, they're the ones that actually uh, develop the workforce. Uh, that live and will be maintained in those areas. So uh, we, we, we've got to have some consistency. Um, we don't want to see 
you know, big projects come and go and then leave the, the areas um, looking for work in, on the in-between times. So I think having a, a mix of these great big projects is excellent and um, we need to see a lot more of the smaller type of projects uh, and they are coming through. So, um, um, you know, there's, you know, there's a raft of areas where you can get that information of what's coming through. If it's state-funded projects in the transport industry, Q-Trip is a program that there is a roadshow um, every year. Um, that transport main roads will be um, uh, releasing that uh, probably virtually, I would suggest, uh, very, very shortly. Uh, it's a bit of an odd one without a budget this year. They um, uh, And also to the federal government delayed. Uh, it's a bit of a... Um, there seemed to be some uncertainty about it, but the state government has committed to the funding of Q-Trip over the four years, um, which puts some certainty back into that program. So there, that is also available on TMR's website. It's, um, there's some great information there about when they uh, anticipate that those projects will come to market. Um, the speed of it is, is a little bit uh, uh, probably a negative, I would say, that from if you have a look at the process between when a, a project is announced to be tendered and actually awarded, it can take sometimes up to six months, um, which we're working pretty hard with them to try and shorten those periods. Um, but yes, I think the other um, CSQ provides uh, a great amount of information on what projects are coming up. Um, and the other thing, you know, I've done in the past as well is um, I haven't relied on any one source to find out where these projects are and, and what they are and, and who's um, tendering them or where that information is coming. I've pretty much created my own database of um, web links to either um, local newspapers, um, government tendering websites, uh, CSQ, um, RDA, anyone who has that information and then you can start to build up your own um, um, build up your own um, profile of what actually is going on. So, um, yeah, if there's anything else you want me to speak on, I'm happy to do it because I'll speak for hours. Yes, well, <laughs> well like, uh, like uh, we've, we've discussed, our database predominantly has major project information, so the, 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 the budget, um, project budgets are around a million and above, so there are a lot of small projects that aren't captured in the database and we can endeavour to try and do that, but there's so many of them um, already available in other sources. Um, so what we've been trying to do is to just cap, uh, encapsulate what is um, you know, considered uh, uh, a large source of um, uh, employment opportunities. Um, so we have time for one more project to dissect. Um, uh, Clinton, which one would you like to pick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, one. <laughs> Why could I say Denny or all of them? Uh, Maybe the Port of Townsville, that's, uh, that's a significant... Port, bit of Port of Townsville yeah. expansion project yeah. total program yes. values 1.6 billion over a period of about 10 years. Mm -hmm. That project has started and it's broken into different sections. There will be one section which will be just to the widening of the existing channel and dredging that out. And traditionally, there are specialist providers in that marine dredging uh, field. But that field will be linked directly with the actual on-land development because the material being dredged will be used to actually develop new hard stand areas across the port. So there is a tender has been released and works have commenced in carting the rocks to put the new rock wall out, which will put, expand the footprint of the port actual land area. The rock wall will be built, then the dredged material will be carted across and it's actually stopping pumped, it's carted across and unloaded by um, excavators. It will be put in behind the new rock wall and will be put in there and then that will be left to sit in a preloaded state for a period of time, and then the new port facilities will be built on top of that. So in the short term, there is already a contract left for the rock wall to be built. Post that, there will be a tender, which I believe is about to be released at any time, for the installation of the dredge material in behind the rock wall. Post the preload uh, period, there will then be all of your traditional um, construction activities that have to happen. 
There'll be all the hard stand areas have to be built. There'll, once you have your hard stand areas built, there'll be roads have to go around there. There is a new rail loop which has to go in over there. So there's all the below ground um, works for rail. There is the rail works itself. There's any of the um, technology which is communication, electrical technology to operate the rail operations. Then there is all the buildings to go up. And again, you'll have your traditional um, carpenters, plumbers, um, electrical, but all of your buildings that go onto that site. So there will also, I would imagine that they might even move into some new communications areas over there as well. So there could be uh, integrated transport mechanisms going in there as well, which will require the specialist comms for that. So that project will go over a number of years. It is going to provide opportunities. Um, there will be packages go out as they progress over the next couple of years. And it is a really huge opportunity for any of the, the local um, trades and, and civil organisations to put their hands up as those packages come out. Um, keep an eye out on your usual tender sites. That's where they'll come from. And uh, it's another good project right in our backyard. You, know, you, you don't very often get projects of that value right within your own footprint. So people make the most of it, don't miss your opportunity. Excellent. Um, Jana, can I just mention too, um, which Damien touched on, that yeah, we certainly do, CSQ does work very closely on major projects, both on local and estate level. So we uh, would be working alongside with the principal contractors, developing a training needs analysis for that particular site and making sure that there's skills and training happening for that project, but carrying forward to future projects as well. So it's really important for our region that we continue to do yes. that to provide that skills yeah. and training yeah. for the industry. Yeah. If we want to touch on one other, there's, there's one other there that um, I think Damien could actually add a fair bit of input to, and that would be the Townsville Ring Road Stage 5. Um, it is a project which is currently in the process where they have shortlisted to two organisations to work in an early contractor involvement process with TMR. Um, my understanding from reading, reading the latest on the TMR website last night is that they have shortlisted to two different consortiums, one consortium being BLB, BMD, Arab and HDR, and the other being Giorgio and ACOM combined. Um, that project is about, for those who know Townsville reasonably well, the ring road that's been built over the last 10 or 12 years, there's a six kilometre section from Vickers Bridge out to Shore Road, which is still only two lanes, one lane each direction, and the rest of it's dual lane each direction. This project is about duplicating that out to being two lanes each direction. So the entire ring road goes four lanes, two lanes each direction all the way through. Um, it will also involve the construction um, of an interchange with Beck Drive, which isn't currently there. So it's a significantly large project. Again, it's right within your own footprint. Um, the intention is to have the two organisations that evolved in the early contractor involvement stage come up with their design and construct methodologies by the end of this year. TMR will then select which one of those they'll go with so they can progress towards construction as of mid next year. Um, so it's the type of project that will include your road building packages, your concrete packages to do with roads, anything to do with culverts or pipes, headwalls, that type of thing. Specifically with the interchange, there'll be concrete works there. They are suggesting that there will be more intelligent transport systems there, which is the big signs which you see up over the networks, which tell you um, this next exit closed or um, reduced speed, traffic accident ahead, whatever. Um, the intelligent transport system, which need to be uh, set up and linked into the uh, state government or TMRs networks. Um, so there will be those communications requirements there, electrical requirements for all the street lighting that goes with it. Um, so you have your traditional, as I say, your roadworks, concrete package, electrical packages, 
comms package and intelligent transport system packages, and for the interchange, uh, be some what we class as bridge building, structure building requirements specifically. And then associated with that, there's opportunities for landscapers and that on the finishing off on the sides. So, um, Damien, what would you like to add to that? Yeah, as always, great to follow you, Clinton, because it's always. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe the time frame is being accelerated um, um, as part of COVID um, government is going to try and push as many projects forward as they can um, I believe that the design the well into the design part of that and I think it's actually and now it's just a costing and a selection process now um, I was speaking to one of the proponents last night, so um, they're probably a little bit frustrated with the with how fast it's going. But uh, it'll be a lot faster than what TMR have actually publicised. Uh, that project will trigger um, the requirements for best practice principles and local engagement. Um, that'll be part of the assessment of that project. So there'll be weighting put against that. So um, there'll be a genuine. Um, uh, request and need and contractual requirement um, by whoever builds that to make sure that their um, not only their local buy is increased um, but also the uh, training requirements as well that'll be on that project. So that'll be um, great to see some good trainees and apprentices, apprentices come out of that project. Um, the, the duration um, is, is long enough to really have a, a leave a good legacy. Um, Actually, fixing that bottleneck is going to be fantastic for Townsville anyway. So I think it's a, a great project on its own, but also too, it's a great project for locals to get engaged. And just by the nature of that sort of project, they, they're multifaceted with the trades and uh, with the suppliers, you know, from uh, labour, plant hire to materials. Um, there'll be a, a lot of engagement with that project. All right, thank you. Um, it's with, um, have we got any questions for the panel? You've got one typed up there about uh, for Q build. No, oh, I don't see it. Yeah. Our question is: Do you have to be local to be considered for a tender or SOA for Q build? Uh, within the one twenty five. Kilometer. So, in um, with the Queensland purchasing policy and the uh, buy local, uh, 125 is local. That's a zone one contractor. If we don't, if we exhaust all our opportunities for a zone one, then we'll look at a zone two, which is further afield, and then a zone three. So, you do have to be. It, it is in. Um, it's your advantage to be local. Um, do we have any more questions? No? Um, all right. So just as a close, I'd, I'd like to pick up on what Damien um, highlighted there. These projects that are about to hit the floor, there's, there's a lot more than those couple we had on the screen. They are the opportunities for us to start looking at the development of the skill sets going forward. And there is a necessity for all of the industry to play their part in um, taking on the, the next generation of tradespeople that we're going to need. And we need to be looking at what are the changes in technology in that training as well, because every time we're going to um, work sites now, there's always something new. So we need to be developing the skill sets for the future, both in the new trainees and in our existing employees. So where we start talking about training, there's a lot of times there's a mindset of it's just the apprentices coming through. Well, I believe we need to increase that focus on the existing workforce as well and look at the upskilling of existing workforces to carry forward as, as well. Um, if we have a look, the, the type of things that are the really big projects um, do provide the ideal opportunity for a person to start and finish an apprenticeship or a traineeship in one day. Not all projects have that time duration to make that available. 
So we also need to look at and plan where we're going to get our next lot of works from to make that training opportunity available for people. And the idea of looking at these pipeline of projects as is now on the RDA website on CSQ's um, knowledge base as the um, QBuilt put out, is for organisations to start looking in their business planning phase of what are the works that they're going to be chasing in a program of works to maintain their continuity of business, but also provide the opportunity for the skills development for those people that need it, because we all need to be looking at how we are training the next generation. So I'd suggest take the, take the opportunities, take all of the uh, available websites and that, look at those, target what works you're looking for, look at how you map those out, and then start planning for your business viability and your staff's viability. That's yeah. And I'm certainly happy to facilitate yeah. the industry yeah. for businesses from yes. my training source. I'd like to add that our webinar series has been developed to facilitate that flow of information. So we've started with this uh, as um, about uh, sources of information. Um, our follow-up webinars are specifically around uh, employing and, and recruiting uh, in this in this uh, construction space um, uh, with regards to training uh, we've also got a webinar specific to to funding that's available for training new employees in construction um, so um, as well as a uh, uh, one specifically targeting job seekers um, uh, for construction so with that um, thank you for your time. Uh, this recording will be available and I, I please accept my apologies for the, the, the mix up with the screen displays, but the PowerPoint presentation will be available for you. Um, thank you very much.